What is up everybody and welcome to another episode of Down the Fairway. In today's episode of Down the Fairway, I'm going to be taking you through one of my favorite drills that I like to do when I do my field work. Now, a long time ago, a professional disc golfer gave me some great advice that really changed my game. He told me that if I could get every single disc to land and not have a lot of movement after it landed, that I would become a way better disc golfer. Now, of course, I didn't really understand right away what he meant, but over time, I have definitely practiced what he said and learned the exact reasons why he told me that. Now, a lot of people will throw hyzers, straight shots, and hyzers, but when the disc lands, it has a lot of movement afterwards. Now, what happens is, when you have movement after your disc lands, you don't know exactly where that disc is going to end up. You see a lot of people throwing skip shots or power hyzers that flare off to the left or straight shots that land but then carry after they land a good 20 to 30 feet past where they expected it to land. Now, the one thing that the best players in the world all do is when the disc lands, the disc is out of energy. And that's what I'm going to be practicing today. I'm going to be practicing all my shots. I'm gonna throw one shot and I'm gonna throw the exact same disc and I'm gonna to try to land it within a few feet of that disc. And when it lands, I don't want there to be a lot of action after it lands. I want it to only move a good 10 to 15 feet is all. In doing this, I will be more accurate and I'll be able to throw my disc where I want and I'll take the guesswork out of it. Which means when I'm on fire in a tournament, I don't have to worry about making 30 footers on every hole. I'm gonna be parking most of the holes that I play. There's two ways to do this. One of the ways is to stretch out the disc's potential, which means throw it as hard as you can. Or you can down tempo on your arm swing to manipulate the flight of the disc. Now, I'm actually not very good at that particular way. So what I do is I throw it pretty hard almost every time that I throw, and I'll stretch out the disc potential so when it lands, it doesn't have a lot of energy left. Now the first shot that I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw a skip shot that has a lot of energy after it lands. So you can see the difference between the two shots that I'm trying to play. Now hopefully the flights are the exact same, but one's gonna land soft and one's gonna land with a bit more energy. Some of the ways you can manipulate the disc is with height, or like I had said, stretching the disc out to its fullest potential. Now the difference between those two shots are, one of them was a skip shot. I kept it lower to the ground, so obviously it was gonna have more energy. And the other one, I just used height to slow the disc down. That's what you call a stall hyzer. So work on those stall hyzers so that your disc doesn't have a lot of energy after it lands. Now what I meant by stretching your disc potential out is this. I'm going to throw two buzz shots. The first buzz shot that I'm going to throw I'm only going to throw at about 60%. The second one I'm going to throw, I'm going to try to stretch that flight out as far as I can. And what will happen is the first one that I throw will have a lot of energy and probably want to move left. The second one is going to penetrate forward and actually land with less energy, even though I throw it harder. Now you might say that just landing it flat will do the trick, and that's true. Landing a disc flat will take a little bit of the ground play away, but also stretching that flight out as much as you can. Once the disc is slowed down at the end of the flight, it won't have anywhere to go except for right where you threw it, and that's what we're looking for. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Down the Fairway. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment in the section below, and I'll see you down the fairway.